No matter what anyone says, he pulled that trigger and he had a choice. Think to that reality and accepting that is the hardest thing I've ever had to accept in my life. I will never see my daughter again. I will never talk to my daughter again. Born and raised in Colorado, Rhode Island, and Virginia, Natalie Bollinger was a happy, 19-year-old young woman. Natalie had big dreams for her future and was well on her way to achieving them. She was about to finish high school in Broomfield, and she had already earned a scholarship and was looking forward to continuing her studies in nursing. Her parents supported her ambitions and were proud of her accomplishments. She attended church, was active in her community, and was known for her kind and giving spirit. She was a gifted and talented artist, who had been drawing since she could hold a crayon. Her artistic talent was evident in her work, and she was highly sought after by those who knew her. She was also known for her willingness to help anyone, regardless of their background or situation, and her ability to foster positive relationships with everyone she interacted with. She would often go the extra mile to ensure that those lonely people had all the support they needed, and were taken care of. This was clear in the way she treated Sean Schwartz, with kindness, even though he was old and had mental problems. Sean once confided in her that he felt like he was being swallowed up by darkness. She listened to him attentively, and in her own way, she comforted him and helped him find hope again. But Sean also did the same for Natalie. Only after maybe a year, when she moved to Virginia, and Sean betrayed her trust, Natalie stopped talking to him. Basically, Natalie had a hard time trusting people and was very guarded around them. She was also quite sensitive and tended to take things personally, which made her even more guarded. In fact, there was another side to Natalie that wasn't as simple, and that makes this case even more disturbing. When Natalie and Sean got along, they revealed some bizarre stories and secrets to each other. For the past few years before she moved to Virginia, Natalie struggled with heroin and other heavy drugs. But she also struggled with Schwartz, who followed her like a puppy, sleeping behind her work building. He texted, emailed, and called her constantly, saying that she had filed for a restraining order, which had been granted. This behavior showed that Sean had an unhealthy obsession with Natalie, and he was willing to disregard a court order, in order, to continue his stalking of her. And a few days after receiving her restriction, Natalie Bollinger, vanished mysteriously. Her boyfriend called the Broomfield police, to report her missing, together with his 9mm pistol. Immediately, people jumped to conclusions about Schwartz, urging the police to investigate him. Okay, the Broomfield Police Department just got a hold of me. Um, Natalie Bollinger is missing. Um, if you know her, uh, her the, I'm going to post up some pictures here. Uh, please help find her, please. I, I don't... Um, please help. Sean, however, became overwhelmed with the accusations and made sure to let his side of the story be heard. In, not a suspect. <laughs> the man claimed that Natalie was suicidal and suffering from substance abuse issues. He also argued that her family had been putting a lot of pressure on her, not allowing Natalie to make her own decisions and constantly criticizing her. He repeatedly told those who attended his stream, that the focus should be on finding Natalie, rather than pointing fingers. Alright, um, I don't know if this probably won't go to Natalie, but just in case, um, I, uh, the lady from the Strange. Law enforcement asked the public to keep an eye out for Natalie. But they didn't wait, or search for long. The next day, a dairy farmer in Adams County came across a dead body in the woods, not far from Natalie's home. Police found the body covered in leaves, and a single gunshot wound was visible in her head. They contacted Broomfield Police, who issued a Beyond Alert, and checked Natalie's Facebook page. Sadly, they're quick to identify that the body is Natalie Bullinger, right after seeing the tattoo on her arm. At first, they thought it was suicide, but later determined it was a homicide caused by a bullet in the back of her head. 
Autopsy results showed that the bullet wound was not self-inflicted, and despite a lethal heroin dose, found in her system, it was not enough to kill her. Okay, well good afternoon. Um, I'm Mike McIntosh from the Sheriff of Adams County, and uh, thank you for being here so that we can uh, talk about where we're at on the uh, Natalie Bollinger case. Um, what I would like to do first uh, is read a statement on, on behalf of the family. The investigation continued on even though we couldn't officially release the name. Um, obviously, we had been con in contact with uh, Ted and other family members um, ver the very early morning hours of, of Saturday. And so you probably saw maybe even a flurry of things going on on social media where um, Facebook gets to gets to put out that information before we can go through our official steps to to make sure that 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 we get it right and we do it by the numbers. Again, our detectives have been working around the clock, and that has been um, the, the the person that they have been uh, had identified and were working towards the investigation of is is her death. Yeah, there was one person. Yes. In, in mid December. Have you accounted for that individual we have. About, about the same time she disappeared? We, we have talked to him. Um, and uh, again, not ready to call anybody a suspect, um, but um, it, it certainly a piece of our investigation, a piece of our timeline. There are other theories on social media too. I haven't sure. looked at all of those. Yes. Um, yeah. I, just your reaction to all that. In, 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 in today's day and age, it's, you know, it's, it's kind of fascinating how much information that we can gain through that. Uh, but it's also, on the other side of that, there's a lot of information that is absolutely untrue, uh, false uh, accusations, um, claims that, that never were. So those are all things that, just like you suggest, that we look at and then we, tr we try to collaborate that. Does that make sense? Does that fit in with, with what's being said? Um, it, is, it is a day and age where we have to have investigators that are good at extrapolating that information and then we try to put together a timeline. Um, and so sometimes that takes time and sometimes there's things out on, on social media that um, is, is absolutely headed down, down the wrong path. And uh, uh, our goal is, is to make sure that we're we're not heading down a path, down a rabbit trail that we don't need to go down. So uh, a lot of different techniques come into place in today's day and age with, with the social media, um, with computers, with phones, with Twitter, with Facebook. Um, helpful tools, helpful for um, identification fairly quickly for us to know who it, who it was uh, uh, that, w that we had found. Um, but. You know, it's at, at times it can also be a detriment to, to uh, what you're trying to do as an investigator. Was there any evidence found at the scene? Sheriff McIntosh wanted to make sure that all potential suspects were investigated thoroughly, and they decided to look into Natalie's boyfriend, since his name had been mentioned in some of the rumors. However, detectives quickly determined that he had no involvement in the case. One day after Natalia was murdered, the deputy said they had persons of interest, suggesting there was a clear suspect at the time. After all, Sean Schwartz was the man against whom Natalie had an order of protection. This is the guy she posted about on the internet, saying he stalked her, and two weeks later, she disappeared. Sean Schwartz was immediately suspected, but he was never arrested or charged. When he was taken to Boulder Community Hospital, he yelled at staff and police, who later arrested him. I, I my January money, I didn't, I didn't pay all my bills. I still got like three hundred dollars left on that. So, if it help you to get somewhere safe, I got, I got money I can send you to be safe. Still, the case turned out to be a bit of a surprise. Joseph Lopez, 23, was named the suspect, and his relationship with Bollinger, developed through a Craigslist, ad she allegedly posted. The ad in which Lopez responded, was titled, I want to put a hit on myself. 
Uh, the Adams County Sheriff's Office obtained numerous warrants regarding information relating to Natalie's communication with others. And uh, that's truly uh, one of the um, investigative techniques uh, that is really important to go through, but it takes time to go through all of that. As you can imagine, a 19-year-old social media or phone, there's a lot of data there. And uh, so looking through all of that data, uh, conducting numerous interviews, um, we, were, we were able to develop and identify Joseph Lopez, uh, date of birth 6-6 of 95. Uh, just last night, uh, we were in contact with Joseph Lopez. Um, he, he, uh, we contacted him. Uh, he came to the, the sheriff's office on his own accord and uh, agreed to talk with our investigators. Um, after that uh, interview, after that, invest, uh, uh, that interview that took place, um, Joseph was, was arrested uh, for the murder of Natalie Bollinger and uh, he is now in the Adams County Sheriff's Office um, and the formal charges will be coming forth. Uh, we booked him in uh, for first degree murder. The investigators found more than 100 text messages between Lopez and Natalie on the night she disappeared. After he changed his story, they confronted him with GPS data, placing his car at the crime scene. And after changing his story many times, the third scenario was closest to reality. Lopez pretended to be a hitman, and responded to her ad with the intention of talking her out, of ending her life. Lopez also suffered from depression and suicidal thoughts, and thought he could help. But Natalie couldn't be persuaded, saying she wanted to be executed from behind, so she wouldn't see the gun. They kneeled on the ground, prayed together, and then he stood up, closed his eyes, and shot her in the back of the head with a single bullet. The police then asked him about the gun, which was in his trunk. Lopez was then arrested and held without bail in the Adams County Jail on suspicion of first-degree murder, pending a court hearing. To avoid a first-degree murder charge, Lopez took a plea deal, and was found guilty of second-degree murder instead. Rather than serving a lifetime in prison, he'll get 48 years with five years of parole. The judge also dismissed Bollinger's father's motion to continue the hearing. Ted Bollinger, her father, was in the Adams County Jail for parole violations, but he was allowed to speak at his daughter's sentencing. Joseph Lopez Martinez is in uh, minimum security at the Adams County uh, Correctional Facility. There's no justice in this. And for Adams County to have enough evidence to convict him and then make him an offer is a spit in my family's face.